Hitman 3 released PC VR support back in January, and VR gamers aren't happy. In this video, I want to go over all the issues and try to be as constructive as I can. First, let me just say that despite all its issues, I'm still having fun with Hitman in VR. The Hitman series are great, and you can play through all three of the recent trilogy if you own them through the Hitman 3 level launcher. The VR mode has some redeemable qualities. You've got a full body with okay inverse kinematics. I think it's important for this game because you're playing as Agent 47 and you're constantly changing into different outfits. It's great being able to look down and see your disguise and you find yourself role playing more than if it was just floating hands. The game has full collisions so your hands or objects won't go through other things. You can walk up to NPCs, give them a nudge and they'll react or punch them in the face. You can also push open doors with your hands, although you can also use a button press as well. They have made efforts to remove HUD elements so that the information is on your left wrist, which you can configure in the options. I don't think that IOI knew what they had was bad. Developers just have a habit of being in a bubble, especially AAA developers. So they thought what they had was good, but it's missing some pretty fundamental features we expect from all VR games, so let's go over them now. First, let's talk about the graphics. This is a AAA game in quality, polish and visuals, so I fully expected the game to run badly in VR. The game actually runs significantly better than expected, even with all the options turned up. The issue is, they seem to be rendering the game in VR at very low resolution by default. If you run the game with normal super sampling level, then the game will look bad. Here's the game at 100% super sampling through Steam VR. Here it's at 150%. And here, 200%. Probably can't tell much from the YouTube video, but it's very blurry in the headset. I normally run at 200% because I've got an RTX 3080, and most games look great, but even at 200%, Hitman is very blurry. I ended up cranking the super sampling up to the maximum of 500%, which the game shouldn't even run at this level, but it does. You can see that I'm still hitting 80 FPS, and that's while I'm recording as well. If we go down to lower super sampling levels, you can see that my GPU utilisation goes down. I think the game is running at the same resolution as the PSVR version. Hopefully IOI can look into this as the game should be matching the resolution of the Steam VR. At 500% super sampling, the game looks great. Still some slight blur caused by temporal anti-aliasing, but it's perfectly playable and I'm pretty fussy about this stuff. The other issue is the game has dynamic resolution built in which can't be turned off so sometimes the game will reduce the resolution to maintain frame rates. You can see this happening, especially outside, if you look up to the sky, there's a checkerboard effect as the game is adjusting the resolution. We need to be able to turn this off. I would rather see some dips in frame rate and maintain full resolution, plus the game is adjusting the resolution down to keep the frame rate, so you're never going to go into reproduction, so you can't use motion smoothing or ASW, which is a method of halving the frame rate, then doubling it back up to smooth things out. A couple of nice extra things I'd like to see is integrated fidelity FX. This is an upscaler with built-in sharpening which really helps bring out the details that removes that last bit of blur caused by temporal anti-aliasing. I'm personally using Reshade to add this manually as well as some colour correction to compensate for the LCD screens and it looks great. Reshade does seem to be affecting performance a lot in this game though. I had to turn the super sampling down from 500 to 250% but even at 250%, so half of what I were in before, the game still looks better because of the sharpening and the colour correction. I'll put a link in the description to another video I used on how to install Reshade for this game if you want to try it. It would be nice if we had the option to adjust the brightness and contrast in game, as well as a built in sharpening for VR. The game did have DLSS and FSR added, but unfortunately, after trying it, it doesn't seem to be working in the VR version, which is a shame. So, to summarise, they need to check the default render resolution the game is set to. It should match up with Steam VR numbers. Give us the option to turn off dynamic resolution. Fidelity FX support that worked with VR and being able to adjust the contrast and saturation in game would be nice, but not essential. So let's talk about the meat of the game, the VR controls. First, your hands are off. If I put the controller overlay in Steam, you can see that the hands don't line up with the controllers at all. They actually sit on top of your controller, so when you rotate your hands in real life, the in-game hands are rotating around them rather than the movement being with them. This makes your hand movements exaggerated, 
Not only does it look stupid and break immersion, but it also makes aiming guns really hard. If they can get the hand position lined up with the controls properly, then the pistols will feel great. It doesn't have manual reloading, so it's done with a button press like the main game. Honestly, I wasn't expecting this anyway, as it's a VR mode added to a non-VR game, rather than a ground-up VR game, or even just a port sold as its own thing. Two-handed weapons feel terrible though. They still act like one-handed weapons, even when two-handling them. If you look at any VR first-person shooter, when you one-hand a weapon, your main hand has full control. But when you grab the front of the weapon, the gun aims where both hands line up, your main hand will still control tilt, but if you twist your hand, the gun won't move. With Hitman, your aft hand is just for show, so even when your other hand is attached to the gun, it does nothing. The main hand still has full control of the gun's aim. When you add on top of that the bad hand position, as well as some overly aggressive hand smoothing, you end up with the worst feeling two-handed weapons I've ever used in a VR game. They also use a proximity system for your off hand, so when your hand goes near the foregrip, it automatically attaches to the gun. Then you have to pull your hand away for it to detach. This isn't good. You want to be able to grab the foregrip by bringing your hand to the front of the gun and then pressing and holding the grip button with the option for it to be as a toggle. This stuff's been figured out a while ago, so it's disappointing that we're still seeing developers not spend a couple of hours just looking at pretty much any other VR game with two-handed weapon handling, just to see how it's done right. The snipers use a 2D screen that pops up when you pull the gun to your face. I'm really not a fan of this, but I understand why they did it, as making proper scopes that render the game again isn't a quick and easy thing to implement, and it can cost a lot of performance. It would be nice if they did add proper scopes, and the snipers aren't fun to use in the current state. The game has melee. You can punch with your fist, or smack people in the face with objects. The way it works is you have to use the trigger to prime the object. If you don't, you will still make connection and knock someone down, but they'll just keep getting back up again. I accidentally skipped the tutorial when I first started the game, and didn't realise this, so spent a couple of minutes repeatedly punching someone over and over again, and they just kept getting up, which ended up being pretty comical. If you want to knock someone out, you need to prime the weapon, and now they'll get knocked out, so that you can strip them down to their underpants. They've done this because they don't want you to accidentally knock people out when you don't mean to. It's not that big of a deal once you know how it works, and as long as you play the game like a normal person, you won't have any issues, but obviously if you start trying to break the game, you will. One big issue which needs to be fixed is the game has no room scale support. This isn't so people can walk around their entire room, because most people play in one spot. The problem is that people like me and many others like to physically turn our bodies rather than use sticks to turn. And because we're not ballerinas that pirouette on the spot, we do tend to move around a little bit in our play space. The way the game works now, you can physically turn and the body does follow your head, but if you move your body in real life, the in-game body will lean then simply fade out, so you end up having to press the reset button a lot during gameplay, otherwise things get funky and your hands and arms get completely screwed up. It's very immersion breaking. You also can't crouch. If you crouch in real life, your in-game character disappears, so you can only crouch and hide behind objects by pressing the crouch button, which personally I hate because now I'm standing in real life, but half of my body is effectively in the floor. Adding room scale support isn't a simple task, because you need to figure out how to keep the body centred to the HMD location, but also allow for some slight bending, like peeking around corners. Otherwise, you might be peeking around a corner, but the body in the game is sticking out. You've got to make sure that the hitbox follows your in-game body, the game needs to be able to tell when you're crouching so that it can change the movement speed and NPCs won't see or hear you like they would if you were standing. It's pretty complex code, especially when you take an in-game body into account, which is why most developers go with a floating hands method. The simplest way would be to have the body simply follow the HMD and not have the legs moved so they're being dragged on the floor like in Population 1. This isn't going to look good if you're physically walking around your play space, but most people wouldn't do that anyway. The other option is to have the body lurp to the centre if the HMD gets away from the body by a certain amount. This is the ideal solution, but then you need to spend a lot of time fine tuning how much tolerance you need before the body recenters, and how do you handle recentering the body? Does it simply pop back to the centre, or do you animate the legs and have the body walk to catch up with the position of the head? Crouching would need leg inverse kinematics. So as you move your head down, the in-game body and legs gradually crouch in a natural way. 
It's a lot of work, but I think it's worth figuring out because it will dramatically improve VR support for PC, but will also be used in the PSVR version of the game as well, or any other future games that they might add VR support to in the future. Other stuff worth mentioning are the fact that there's no left-handed support. You can't use your left-handed pick stuff up, only the right. This sounds like a very simple thing to fix, but they're actually using the hand positions for holding all the objects and guns from the flat game, and Agent 47 is right-handed. To add left-handed support, they would need to add hand poses for all the objects and weapons to support the left hand, which would be a lot of work. The sprinting in this game is very strange. By default, by default to sprint, you have to use the left grip button. Movement when walking is based on your head, but when you sprint, it's based on the in-game's body position, which can move around if you move your hands sometimes, and it doesn't follow the head perfectly, so it can feel very clunky and strange. If you want to throw something, you need to use your left hand and then you pull the trigger to aim. You then get an arc to show where the object is going. If you lock onto the NPC, you can throw the object and it fires off like a torpedo. I wouldn't say that this is a bad system. It's using the same system as the flat game and it's important to keep the gameplay balance intact. But the speed you throw stuff is pretty comical. It would be nice if they slowed it down a little and they gave it more of an arc so it looks more natural. The Hitman trilogy are great, and being able to play through them in VR is something that really changes up the gameplay. I never really got into the series out of VR, but love playing it in VR. And being in these incredibly active environments that have incredible attention to detail and are full of life. I hope that IOI watched this video and can update the VR support on PC, because it is pretty rough right now. I don't think it's good to be toxic towards developers. Leaving comments telling them that the VR support is trash or calling developers lazy isn't going to help. If you really want them to fix the game, then give them constructive feedback. Tell them what's wrong with the game and do it in a respectful way. I've seen developers like the Everspace 2 developer come out publicly stating that they won't be adding VR support to the sequel because the VR community are toxic and keep calling them lazy. Why would developers put in the insane amount of time and effort to add VR support to the game for what is, unfortunately, a small amount of players in relation to non-VR gamers, when all they get when they do is abuse. And that's enough of me on my high horse. Thanks for watching if you made it to the end.